We are here to learn something every single day. We are here to uh, be vulnerable to change. And today is no different because we're meeting on a Tuesday at 11. And I'm not used to seeing all of your beautiful faces on Tuesday at 11. And I appreciate you showing up and I appreciate you leaning in and I appreciate you being here because I'm super confident that up until this week, you probably had other things to do on Tuesday at 11 because you are productive time management people. And before we go on, I wanna tell you why this moved. And I wanna bring a lot of clarity behind it and the goal and the reasoning for it. Our goal with team meetings is to provide as much valuable, as much value as we can possibly squeeze into an hour. I want you to learn something. I want you to be motivated about something. I want you to have the ability to connect with the market center. I, I mean, we're on Zoom right now. Uh, when we get back to being in person, I want you to feel the energy. Team meetings build culture. They show us opportunities to learn. They also give us opportunities to have educational moments with speakers from time to time. They give us the opportunity to connect. And our first and foremost goal, my vision, is connection and culture and value with Keller Williams Global East, which is our market center right here. You guys, us, we are a family. We also have the opportunity to tap into Kim's other two market centers up in Indy from time to time. Um, they, the 11 o'clock spot on a Tuesday was an opportunity that would allow us to do that on an occasional basis. And we made the decision as a staff to move it to the Tuesday at 11 so that when we had the opportunity to share a guest speaker, um, that we wouldn't have to create a separate um, meeting necessarily, or a different day, we thought, well, that'd be great if we're already meeting on those times and days, that it'll be really easy to plug those opportunities in. We predict and understand that we'll be able to have more pull and getting a good speaker or educator if we're saying, hey, your audience is three times as big as the typical audience. And we were really motivated by that because again, it's synergy, education, value, purpose. We won't see them more than, I think, once a month would be um, would be the most. It will probably be um, six weeks, maybe a quarter. We don't know exactly what that looks like, but we went ahead and bookmarked that as an opportunity for everybody. The last opportunity that I did mention in the email when we made the announcement is that it will be a chance for Carla Higgins, who's the PC coach, and uh, Jessica O'Reilly, who's the director of leverage opportunities to maybe provide updates or speak about it because there are so many opportunities that KWLE has opened really in the past 12 months that I would be falling short if I wasn't always making it available to you guys in, an, in the easiest format possible. And again, I understand not everybody's gonna be with PC coaching and not everybody um, is using the um, enhanced model or the supported model of KW My Way. I know that. Yet it's just another opportunity for us to be communicative and get everything out there. So I really, I wanted to bring clarity to that. And I wanted to tell you, we we're excited about it. And again, thank you for your grace and changing your day because schedules are tough. I know that. So thank you. All right, let's get started. Tell us something good. He wants to open up with a good, a good report. Seamus, you're muted. Uh, I'm super excited. Um, we we're moving locations from our, our mega agent um, on Lynn Station to literally across the street from the main office at 9900 Shelbyville Road. Um, so I like that I can cross busy, scary Shelbyville Road by foot <laughs> if I really wanted to, to come over there. But uh, seriously, though, we're really excited about it. It's a little bit of a smaller space, but some things that we're doing um, are going to be really, really cool in there. And uh, I'm super excited. Awesome. No jaywalking, please. All right, what else? Did anybody meet their goals in 2020? I'm You're super, super funny to say that. But that <laughs> Although I know some people surpassed theirs, so I applaud them. Yeah, and my team did. Fantastic. Very good. Was it a production goal, a unit goal? What was it? A uh, unit goal. Fantastic. Would you care to share your units? No, um, my, our goal was 75 uh, units um, and we ended at 77. 
Awesome. Very good. Round of applause. That is awesome. Congrats. Congrats. All right. One more. Finish us off with a good, a good like something good. I would like to share mine. Yes. Uh, I received my bold letter this year and it, it said that um, I was closing 20 units this year. And at the time I was writing that because I had closed, I think six units the, the year before that, I thought it was absolutely insane in my mind, but I wrote it and I had the chance to sign the 20 units. Unfortunately, one went back. Uh, so I, I ended up closing 19, but it was, I mean, completely unreal that the number was exactly the number of contracts that I had signed this year. Um, so it wow. was like, it blew my mind right there. That's fantastic. It was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. That's For awesome. those who had never attended bold, tell them what that future letter is. What is the purpose of that letter? So we wrote a letter to our future self one year from the time we attended bold, um, uh, telling our future self what we had achieved in the previous year, 12 months after we attended bold. So whatever your goals are for that year, like uh, you, so dear Lucy, you signed 20 contracts in this year and you, whatever your goals are personally, financially, uh, career-wise, et cetera. And then a year after you receive this letter, you, you leave it there at Bold and a year after you receive this letter in the mail, and I had totally forgotten what I had write, written down. You receive this letter in the mail and I mean, totally surprised that it was exactly the number, like you, you, you put this into your mind, into your subconscious, I guess, and it totally worked. Yes, bold is great, obviously for production, clearly, but it, it's great for production because it's great for your mindset. It's good for your way of thinking. It's good for learning how to set goals. It's good for, for kind of brushing off your drunk monkeys and, and things that you thought you know, this year might be 20 for you and, and your letter next year might be 40 or 50, Lucy. And you know now that it's possible because when you change the way you look at things, things that you, you look at change, you change your habits, you change your schedule. We could talk about both for a whole meeting, but we won't. Thank you for sharing that, Lucy. And we'll keep moving on here. All right, we've got some birthdays. Uh, January 5th, which is today, is Miss Mandy Dape and Tracy Bo Bo Bodie. Tracy Bodie and Mandy Dave. And then on January 9th, Annalise Small celebrates a birthday. Happy birthday, gals. We have new faces in the office. And if you see them in person or on Zoom, please extend a warm welcome. First, Greg Watson, I did see him today. He is joining Jennifer Down's team and was sponsored by Jennifer. Kelsey Haney is also joining us and was sponsored by the one and only Laura Webb. And then Tracy was sponsored by Karen Moreland. Welcome everybody and know that we are all here to help and support you in any way. All you have to do is ask. What a great quote of the day it is from Gary Keller. And the beginning of the year is probably one of my favorite times of the year besides warm summer months uh, because I love to plan and set goals and um, get excited. It's a time to be excited and no better time to transition from 2020 to 2021 with new fresh goals. And I know that we kind of all feel this breath of fresh air and it's so fantastic. So Gary Keller says, if you let goals be the tough guy, you never have to be the bad guy, all right? Don't let your goals be your enemy, all right? Let the goals, let the goals be the tough and you, you don't have to be the bad guy as a result. All right, Legal Eagle Minutes is... We have Harry on and then we have Brad who will talk about contracts as well. Good. Um, Let, go Harry, on. do you wanna go first or do you want me to go first? No, we're probably gonna talk about the same thing. So I'm gonna let you have the, the mic and if I need to add in, I will. You the man. Hey, Amy, can you pull up the, con the new con sales contract? Yes, sir. <clears throat> can you see it okay? I can't. Oh, sorry. <laughs> ah! Let me try this again. There. there we go. Okay. Um, 
there's really very few changes this year. The, the biggest one um, is for those teams that operate under, like let's use Alyssa as an example, the Withrow group that operate as a, they, instead of putting the individual agent's name on the lines, they will put the Withrow group. Well, the KREC doesn't recognize teams or groups as an entity, it has to have a licensee's name on it. So going forward, whoever writes the offer will put their name and license number under the agent's name and the highlighted portion there, you would put the Withrow group, Jimmy Welch team or whatever the team name is on line 20. And that's what's gonna show up on, on the MLS. And any questions about that? It's pretty straightforward. Whoever writes the offer will go under the agent, uh, will have it will be on line 16 and then the team name or group name will be online, will be put on line 20. What about on the listing side, Brad? Uh, it, it, the listing side, there's, there's not a place for, uh, I mean, the, the, there's not a place where you put the agent's name. So does that mean that on the MLS, it won't show up as the agents, it'll just show up as the team? It just depends. Like I, on my team, I don't operate under Brad Long Group. I, I have my name and then the agent's name. Me too. On, on the contract. So it won't affect us. Only, okay. it's only it only affects the uh, groups or teams that, that operate under a group or team name exclusively. Okay. Thank well, you. with list with with listings, we control how we report it on our side anyway. So, right. When we're the buyer agent, we don't control it. So that's why that's there. Cool. All right. Um, and then on line thirty-seven, it is not a, not applicable on the uh, for propane. And they added a line. Scroll down a little bit, Amy. On uh, they added the line 42 which changed uh the that the acquisition of earnest money cash equity line gift and or other source of funds noted lines 41 44 and 45 they just changed those line numbers there no big deal but if you will uh, stay stay right there amy um they changed they changed the way that the initials go on the bottom of, of the first six pages it used to be initial initial date date time time now it's initial date time initial date time which caused it for any of you that use template or layouts in transaction desk, I had to go back and redo all of our layouts because the initials weren't, weren't being put in the proper place. So just be aware of that. All right, keep going. Um, all they just added in the escrow account of the following broker. Now, again, it does, there are some companies that say it's going to be held in a title company's uh, escrow account. Harry will tell you, and I will tell you, do not allow that. It needs to be in, in, in a broker's account because title companies are not held to the same legal standards that a broker is. Harry, do you have any comment about that? No, I agree completely. We don't want that held anywhere other than a broker. Yeah. Brokers yeah. are dictated as to how they can and cannot release the money. Title companies, closing attorneys are not. If I just like your side better than the other side, I can willy nilly give the money to whoever I want to. So it's just not a good practice. This was designed to encourage this to not happen. Uh, it doesn't mean that it can't happen, but you should, as Brent said, try to avoid it if you can. Cool. All right, let's go down to line 161. They just added um, on the, um, if you have to go after the, damages that it can be enforced even if the contract is released by both parties. So no biggie there. Next is the commission. Commission is earned uh, when, it go, when, a, when a contract is accepted. And they just added here that they're obligated to pay the commissions due any entitled broker and all cost of collection, uh, including a reason, reasonable attorney fees. Anything else on there? Nope. Now, if you'll go to the contingency addendum, it, the only thing they did here is they added clarification on line 38. A lot of people did not understand that when you wrote a contingent contract, the earnest money was to be deposited at the time of acceptance of the contingency. So they added clarification here to let everybody know that the earnest money is due upon acceptance of the contingency. And that's it. Harry, you got anything to add? No, sir. You covered them well. 
Cool. Any questions, folks? Oh, these are these. Vicky's updated all the packages by the copier. I updated all the forms in our on our intranet, um, and uh, I think that I, I don't know how. I'm not sure how how command works. I think they they pull that directly from Glar, but it's been updated on on Glar on Transaction Desk and in our on our intranet. So. Hey, Brad, can I say something? Yeah, man. Hey, this is Kevin Edwards for all of y'all don't know, but I am on that forms committee now. Uh -huh. So if you have any questions or anything about something about the documents, uh, you can call or email me and I will be happy to discuss or take it to them. Cool. Same for me too. This is Katie, by the way. Hi, Katie. Hi. Thank you, Kevin and Katie. Hey, uh, we appreciate that. Question, hey, um, what was at the bottom of page one? There was a little highlighted section at the bottom of page one. It, they just changed the uh, the line numbers on. It said something about 40, 44, 45 is not contingency or something like that. Well, what what they're saying, if you if you indicate on on lines 41, 44, 45 that your buyer has uh, earnest money deposit number one, cash, or any of the other things, if if they say they have that. And they end up, it ends up they don't have it. It is not a contingency for them to get out of the contract. That's all, and all they did was change the line number. They added they added that line forty two in there, which which made them rearrange the. They, nothing's changed other than the line numbers referenced. It's just more clear clarity. Well, they just change again. It, it nothing at all. Nothing changed at all other than the line numbers. So it's right. the same same as it all as it's always been, or as it's been in the last few years. Excuse me, has that new contract been added to DocuSign? Um, that, is out that, of our, the that, is, that is out of our control. Um, DocuSign grabs the forms directly from Galar is the way I understand it. Uh, so yes. I, we don't have any we don't have any control over that. So I'm not sure when that will happen. Hey Brad, it's Shelly. I have a quick question. You sure. said so if you're going through transaction desk in AuthentiSign, you said that and you're using a template uh the initials and everything were kind of messed up is that still the case now or was that previously or no if you'll look um uh, amy can you pull up the um the contract again because it's nice that they that they split them all up because everything was such in a jumble before yeah it again it's um they instead of it, it used to say initial initial date date and time time so for those of us that use the layouts which auto, which automatically place the initials you have to go through and edit all of your layouts so that the initials will be in the correct, so everything will be in the correct okay. slide. So just keep an eye on that. All right, thank you. Yeah. What, are, what are we looking at again? These right here? Just right there on line 115. It's just, you'll have to go in and, and if again, not, not everybody uses layouts, some people drag and drop, but if you lose, use layouts, you'll have to go in and edit those so that everything will be in the right place. And Mike, there's that 41, 44, 45 that he mentioned. Cool. Any other questions? Hey, Harry, give me a call when you uh, when we get out, when we get off the call here. Will do. And Katie, I'll see you tomorrow. I think. Yes, you will. Do y'all have any uh, broker or um, excuse me, attorney related questions for Harry before he goes? quick question and and I don't know if I did this right so I count we counter offered on an offer yesterday but they had not accepted the offer then I was I got two more offers that came in we rescinded our counter offer I felt horrible to do it but is it okay to do yes and if it's okay to do can we do it by email and text? Do we have to have a certain paper signed? Brad, do you want that or you want me to take that? Oh, go for it, man. It's absolutely acceptable to do that. And Brad and I both teach that when an offer comes to your client and it has an expiration of six o'clock tonight, we need to make sure that we're advising our clients that six o'clock tonight only means six o'clock tonight if the other side hasn't changed their mind. So 
You shouldn't feel bad about it. They should be advising their clients that they need to respond as quickly as possible because that's always an option for that client uh, on the other side to withdraw the offer. How you withdraw the offer, you got to be able to prove that you withdrew the offer prior to the time that the other side can prove that they accepted the offer. So I would recommend that you do three things. Immediately withdraw it in an email, followed up immediately by a text, followed up immediately with a phone call. That way there can be no uncertainty as to what happened and what the timing is. The timing on the withdrawal in an email is the timing that will supersede everything else. But I think it's still good practice to make sure that you've reached out to the other side as timely as possible by a phone just so they know that this is what's happened. And I'm a big believer, even when I did nothing wrong, that I apologize. So I would get on the phone and say, I'm so sorry to tell you this, but we got a better offer and my client has decided to accept it. So we're withdrawing our offer. And just to be clear, that is, that's not just them accepting it. It's that it's being delivered to you. It has to have been delivered to you. That is correct. So they have to have accepted it. Because I had this happen, Andrea, where I had to withdraw it as well because I had other offers come in that were better. And when I emailed him, he's like, oh, well, they've already signed it, accepted it. I'm like, well, sorry, you didn't deliver it to me. So that means correct. you can still withdraw it. Well, Harry, I'm not saying that we accepted another offer yet. He rescinded that offer, and then because there were three offers, he said, let's do best and final by 10 tonight. So that's still okay? Same answer. You're perfectly okay. fine. And again, we all need to learn lessons from this. That yeah. When an offer lands on our lap, we need to address it as fast as we can because it's not a guarantee that it's going to stick around. So you've done absolutely everything you should have done and you shouldn't feel guilty about it. You should feel good about it. You're doing a great job for your client. That's right. <laughs> I hated it for the buyer. It made me oh, yeah. vomit. Well, not your client. They should have done better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you all have nothing else, Harry and Brad, we thank you so much. Thank you guys. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We have Miss Selena Jones with TBF Mortgage Company on our call. And if you haven't had the opportunity to meet Selena or work with her, you, you're missing out. And this is now her time to say, hey, she has, I can personally vouch for this gal. She's worked with our team. Um, she, her communication is fantastic. Her customer service, her products, just her professionalism, it's all there. So she's going to say hello and tell us a little bit about herself. And Selena, thank you so much for joining us today. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Selena and I'm really excited to be on here with you guys today. And I am a broker here in Louisville, Kentucky. And we broker through about 20 different mortgage companies. So I've got lots of different options as far as lenders go, as far as underwriting guidelines go, as far as pricing. So it's, it's really fun and exciting. And I feel like it puts your buyers in the best possible position that I have so many options available. Um, I wanted to give you guys a quick update because I feel like it's super important for everybody to know how low rates actually are. Um, you know, you hear a lot of talk about, you know, rates are the lowest they've been in so many years. Um, it's actually pretty surprising. I went on this morning to one of our more competitive price lenders that we work with, and I priced out a conventional 30-year, a FHA 30-year, and a VA 30-year, um, all with excellent credit, so 740-plus credit score. Um, all of the rates were in uh, the twos. So a 30-year fixed rate mortgage and 2% interest rate with all three of those loan programs is phenomenal. Um, and what that really means for you guys as agents is buying power. So I think it's really, really important to explain to our buyers that time is of the essence because I surely don't feel like these rates can stay around forever. I mean, they're going to have to eventually start creeping you know, back up a little bit. And I was having a conversation this weekend with one of the buyers I have pre-approved and she's very, very conscious of her mortgage payment. She has a limit of 
1575, that is her top that she is willing to pay per month. And I explained to her that, you know, right now I was quoting her out at 2.75 for a transition 30 years, actually a little bit lower today for her, but over the weekend, that's what I was quoting her. And if she did, she's looking at a, um, you know, 1570 at 2.75, that would be about 1570 a month. So if that's at a 385 price point, I have all my notes here. Um, if she waits until rates have increased, so let's say in six months, the rate is three and a half, which is still a fantastic interest rate. Uh, she's only gonna be able to buy about 350 in a purchase price. So that is a $35,000 difference if she waits until the rates are up to like three and a half. So that's tens of thousands of dollars in a purchase price that she would lose because she didn't take advantage of the rates right now. So, you know, you don't necessarily want to encourage somebody to buy just because rates are low, but it's something to think about if somebody's kind of on the fence on timelines that they can get a lot more bang for their buck and their monthly payment right now because of how low the rates are. So something to think about when you're talking to your buyers about where the market is right now, because I know a lot of people sometimes want to wait till spring and it's definitely good to try to get in now and get these low, low rates. So um, anybody have any questions for me? No? Okay. Well, I'm here to help. Um, you can see my information here on the screen. Please feel free to call me, text me, email me with any questions if there's any buyers that you want me to reach out to if anybody's interested in refinancing we also do that as well so i'd be happy to help selena your your company can work with um spanish-speaking clients correct mm -hmm. yeah we can do that mm -hmm. Very good. we try to be as accessible as we possibly can um i'm not uh, the most fluent but i'm i'm, I'm decent <laughs> and we've got a couple of other people who are pretty good too and then i also have a really good um closing person who is bilingual so Wonderful, thank you. Well, it's always nice to be able to tell our clients that if it is their goal that they could buy more house today likely than they can in the future, um, should should they prefer a 385 house versus a 350 house. I think that's a great script. <laughs> thank you, Selena. We really, really appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, so let's talk about the market. We're gonna, we don't make the market, but we interpret it, right, guys? We're, we're experts in interpreting it. So we did a look back on the last seven days, and this is for the entire uh, Louisville area, uh, the GLAR board, basically. In the, in the past seven days, 299 new listings hit. So people aren't all waiting till the spring, guys. We have to be real careful with perception versus reality. 436 new contracts were written, and there were 396 closings. Um, I believe... I don't quite see the very bottom of the screen, Amy. Um, closings. Okay, just 396 closings. When I went on the uh, GLAR earlier this morning, I think for single family houses and condos, there were a little over 1,600 active. So we're just not replenishing right now. Um, fantastic if you're a seller. It's a, it's a very, very strong, strong seller's market and the motivation for buyers and low interest rates and buying power that Selena just discussed is, is so important in the conversations that we're having with our clients. So there's great reasons to be a seller and there's great reasons to be a buyer right now, but always know that market and know how to interpret it for your folks. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about training. So every day at one and four, you can go on to connect and learn something new to, to grow yourself in your business. So if you're getting started in command, stay on at one o'clock and, and start with the fundamentals there. There's opportunities walk through Q and A which we're all learning how to create opportunities and commands so that we can get paid right now. Thank goodness for that. Tomorrow at one, we're gonna launch into the new year with focusing on your one thing. If you have not chosen the book that you're gonna start reading this year and you have either read the one thing once or you've never read it at all, I strongly suggest it will help you drive down to focus and really knock down the next domino that's gonna advance you to your next objective. And then at four o'clock, Wealth Building Wednesday, episode nine. On Thursday, you can talk about your referral network and learn there. And then at four o'clock, there's another Q&A. And then lastly, at Friday, there's some business planning tools for commercial agents. I know there's a few of you out there that are doing commercial deals. And then at four o'clock, Lifeline with Gary Keller. And then Scott Leroy, as we know, is a wealth of assistance and support and knowledge 
I will tell you um, personally, I had to reach out to Scott Leroy for a couple of things over the weekend. They are just helpful, you guys. Um, utilize, utilize, utilize this, this resource. Today, there's a command overview. Um, these are all at one o'clock, by the way. Um, Wednesday, I'll talk about your digital website. Thursday, DocuSign. Friday will be the Scott Leroy Marketing Overview. And Monday, we'll provide an update in terms of what new offerings uh, Command has. So get your phones out, get your planners out. However you mark your calendar for opportunities, I want you to stop here in time block because these are fantastic. The region is rolling out their calendar and we're they're doing it on a quarterly basis right now. Um, it's giving us some good focus, but it's also letting speakers and plans happen in case we're gonna stay virtual the whole time or with the possibility of maybe being in person towards the end of the year, we don't know. Uh, but what has not changed is the fact that we have amazing opportunities to come up and when they're virtual, usually they're free or very inexpensive, which is a great perk to all this virtual opportunity for learning. On January 15th, um, the Huffaker Group is an expansion group that they're, they're actually out of the Nashville area but they've offered to teach a class on January 15th at 3.30, it's virtual, and it's called Master Your Database. David Huffaker teaches this very class. That's kind of his specialty. So we've got this database, we've got command or, or whatever CRM you're using. The best CRM is the one that you're using, by the way, but you wanna learn how to utilize it so that you are constantly in uh, dripping and contacting and touching your people so that you stay top of mind in 2021. On January 21st at 1, Linda and Jim McKissick are going to offer, I believe this is a two-hour class, a time block accordingly, it's the blueprint for creating millionaires through passive income. And I'm going to pause on that because they always provide education on how to create passive income, which is very important and, and achievable, yet their focus for this talk is to create more millionaires. They want more millionaires in this market center, um, so tune in there. And on the 27th of January at noon, also a two hour course, I believe, is how to build a small profitable team using showing assistance and ISAs with Jen Davis, who's of the Holt Group, and Adam Grady of Keller Williams Springfield. So time block, make plans to be there. You won't be sad for doing so. Amy will continue to post updates and links as we go through as she always does. Thank you. <laughs> Alyssa, on, yes. on that one on the 15th, mm -hmm. at Nashville time or our time? That is Eastern there. Um, okay. If you see promotions anywhere else, it did say 2.30 Central, um, but I corrected it for your purposes. Thank you for being on it, Amy. <laughs> Um, and then I wanted to put this out here um, on behalf of Lisa Miller. Um, she would like to remind you that your clients can go on to our public website, kwlouisvilleeast.com, and they can electronically deposit their earnest money. Um, so when you first go to kwlouisvilleeast.com, you'll notice over on the far right, it says earnest money. And it's very user friendly. Um, when you click there, it prompts you to put in the buyer's name, the buyer's uh, address that they're purchasing, and the KW agent, and then they continue on to payment method. Um, the fee is $7, which is well worth it for allowing this opportunity um, for them to, to do this electronically, especially for those that are out of state. Um, what happens is Lisa Miller gets notified immediately that it's been deposited, and then she reaches out to you to let you know that it's there. Any questions about that? If you need it, Amy did produce um, a little video that was super helpful a long time ago, and I'm sure she would lovingly um, provide that as well if you just want a, a quick walkthrough on exactly the order of the clicks. Yep. All right, so we have um, most of, I, I believe I've seen most of your faces here, of the ALC and the Leadership Academy. ALC is the Associate Leadership um, committee or the Associate Leadership Council rather. And Leadership Academy is something that we added this year that um, they're, they're kind of supporting and undergirding the ALC. The purpose of the ALC is to serve the market center. They are honing their leadership skills as well, um, but it's a huge service. They are not paid to do any of this and they have a passion for the market center. They have a passion for growing businesses and they have a passion for Keller Williams. And they're here to build out the, the pillars of Keller Williams that makes us who we are and truly separates us. 
So what we're going to do today is we're going to give these ALC members an opportunity and I, you know, it's going to be really, really brief, you guys, but they're going to talk about the team that they're leading. Each ALC meeting, each ALC member leads a team that has a focus for all of 2021 so that we can really expand and grow in the way that we want. For example, we have a culture team that focuses on fundraising and charity drives. Um, the culture team is also here to build agent relationships and synergies within the market center. This year as a subcommittee of culture, we have a team that is going to focus on events. We have equity team. That was what we added to our, um, to our culture. Y4C2 TESs equity now focuses on, um, on those items that, that have been so readily um, brought to our attention in the past year. We've got growth team, education team, technology team, finance team, and also a luxury team for the first time ever. We're really excited about it. And we are going to allow each respective team leader to give us your little elevator speech. And before you start as well, they are looking to build their bench. Each team needs teammates. And so when you hear them talk, if something's kind of pulling on your heartstring or motivating you in some way, reach out to them and say, hey, I would love to be on your bench. I would love to help you this year. Um, everything that they ask is gonna be highly doable. We know that we're all busy people. This is not a part-time job. This is an opportunity though, for you to lean in, learn something new, help grow um, and to be excited about. So we will start off with Miss Andrea Walker who's leading the culture team this year. Hey guys, super excited about leading the culture team this year and wanted to find out if we have any fun loving people out there who would love to join us. We are gonna probably meet just once a month uh, for about a half an hour, just really to build up our culture. And I know with all the crazy madness in 2020, we'd like to kind of put that behind us and really start having some cool things happening, whether it's outdoor activities, or serving somebody in our community. So if you'd like to join us, please feel free to email me or call me at 468-3391 and we'd love to put you in the pack. Awesome. Also, can you put your name and email, your name, email and phone number in the chat so that they sure. can reach to you that way as well, please. Thank you. Hey you. All right, thank you, Andrea. Amy, did you have the video by chance for this family? Okay, before Adam and Shama speak, I wanna show you guys a really cool video on family reunion. Their focus is on events and the event that comes up in 40 days is family reunion. That's ridiculous. Hey, how's everybody doing? Hey. I am uh, actually coming from the from, uh, space station because if you've never been to a Keller Williams event, then you just don't know how out of this world they are. So um, really excited. Family reunion is actually the reason that I'm at Keller Williams. I mean, really probably the reason I came to Keller Williams. When I first uh, came to Keller, I was a guest at family reunion and I thought, awesome trip to Phoenix. No way I'm ever gonna come join these bozos drinking their Kool-Aid. I walked into the very first class and um, it was the first, it was literally the first class I'd ever walked into. Um, and I'd, I'd been in other real estate companies and I learned more in those first five minutes than I had learned in the previous five years. Um, so I cannot overstate enough how much there is to learn um, when you go to one of these and the way they're doing it now with virtual. And, and while in my heart of hearts, I hope we get back to in-person events, um, the virtual allows you to be in every place like you couldn't do before. Uh, it's extremely accessible. You can search by topic, you can search by speaker, um, and, and there's just so much value added because they know that it's not as exciting when we're not all traveling across the country. So they're going out of their way to deliver on content quality, et cetera. So, um, and, and family reunion isn't the only event. I mean, we've, we've, we just came out of uh, mega camp this year. And, and I think that was the one that was kind of the test run to see if we can really do events in a, in a big way, even virtual, and they knocked it out of the park. And so I can't help but imagine that they're going to learn from that and come back even better with family reunion. Um, and, and so I'm excited. I'm passionate about events and I hope you guys are too. If you have questions about what they are or want to get a schedule, we can get you that. Um, Adam, do you have anything to add? 
Um, not much outside of the obvious recruiting. I saw you had your hat on, so I wanted to kind of, you know, be a team player there. The, uh, you know, if you'd like to be the Scotty Pippen to Seamus' Michael Jordan and join our group, um, we would love to have you. Um, if you wanted to get into family reunion or mega camp and some of these events, but get more out of them, the best way to do it is to get more involved. So let us know. That's it. Thanks guys. Have a safe landing Seamus back to earth. Thank you. And this is a cool video. Give some volume, Amy. Oh. Thank you. We'll post that video as well on our resource page. It's got some, um, some fun audio to it. It's just a fun little promo um, to energize you for family reunion. But thanks, Seamus and Adam, we appreciate it. Can I hop on and say something funny about that? Yes, please. Uh, our brand new agent, Tracy Bodie, her husband, Chris Bodie, is part of the team that has hung the lights at that massive event for the last several years. I just think that's the coolest little connection. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it's still a small world, no matter what, right? All right, up next is Ben, and I will let you speak about the equity team. Hey, everybody, this is Ben, and uh, that's a smart looking picture there. I wish I looked like that again. Um, <laughs> A, the equity team, I think this year is a, it's kind of a new, uh, it's a new add to the ALC from my understanding. So we're taking it with, um, you know, taken by the reins and try to try to make it ours. I think the overarching uh, goal right out of the gate is to just make sure that we align the directive with our region and the corporate space, just to make sure that we have a good top down um, conversation that's kind of emanating through from top all the way through into our brokerage. Um, we've got a pretty strong outline. I think a lot of it is really just around taking that message and communicating it through the, to, to everyone in the brokerage. So we kind of understand what we mean with this, with this equity team and kind of what we're trying to achieve. Um, and then I've got some um, thoughts around how we can just be, be a little more um, vocal about, you know, our, our brokerage, about our community uh, really to giving a uh, space for the conversation and, um, you know, just to, to work on, uh, I, I kind of, I kind of put out there, you know, just growing through diversity, right? I think we're all looking for that no matter what, what area of the, the world we come from or where we're going that we grow together and, uh, have a unified, uh, conversation. And I think that that kind of emanates, um, um, you know, from, from the region, it's going to come from the region. I, I want to use that first and then take it into our local community here. We all know Louisville last year had a little touch into, uh, we got, a, we got on the front page news, uh, with this conversation going in different directions. And so we're going to try and wrap our arms around it from a KWLE perspective and uh, make it ours. So, uh, Milton and I, um, you know, I think Milton is uh, our ambassador. Uh, from last year, we're going to have kind of start this conversation, try and spark it. And we love all input and um, we'll take it forward. That's about all I got. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. All right. We've got growth team and Miss Rhonda Roberts and Becky Lush will be leading this team. Take it away, girls. Yeah. So we are, um, you know, we want to focus this year on having the agents of the market center see themselves as recruiters, not just to help grow their profit share, but to help the market center get to um, their goals of number of agents. And so we um, are planning to have our first meeting next Monday at two, which will be on Zoom. We would love to have some people join us. We are, you know, we've got some ideas rolling about things we can do 
to just kind of increase that thoughtfulness of how we can all be recruiters um, to the market center. Exactly. And even, even to more be attractors is a really good word too, because when you are attracting and you have a firm belief that Keller Williams is the best place to be in business. It provides the best value. It attracts people because they kind of want to, they want to see how they can grow their business as well. And that's a really cool, that's a really cool space to experience. So thank you, Rhonda, so much for leading that team. I'll just add to that too. And I'm such a, it's such an honor to work with Rhonda, uh, get to know you better. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the year. Um, and just like you said, Alyssa, I, I feel that KWLE has so much to give and to offer. And I really seriously feel like it betters lives. And, and for me, I, I love a lot of our fellow uh, agents that are out in other companies that I feel that they would really just thrive to, the, to their fullest potential by, by being with KWLE. So m my goal is to share that with people and to allow them to have the opportunities that we have here. Very good. Thank you so much. All right, education. Katie, I saw you're on the call here. I am. I think Drew's here too. Or he's... Are you Drew? <laughs> here. Oh yeah, there he is. Hey, Drew. Okay. Yeah, so um, I'll jump in for a second and then I'll let Drew take over because I've got a fussy little one. I'm trying to keep calm. So um, we are all about training and personal and career development. Uh, we want to make sure that we are bringing you the most valuable content to help grow your business. Um, so whatever that looks like, I, if you're brand new and just need some skills, if you are in it for a while and need um, to kind of break through a ceiling, if you are a rock star and need some uh, top notch, top 20% type content, we want to bring everything to everybody. So if you haven't done so, and I can recreate it. Um, I put a poll in the Facebook resource group to kind of gauge what everybody feels like they need as far as educational content. Um, I'll probably repost it today just so it's kind of at the top of the Facebook feed in the resource group. But I want to learn in order for us to build the best calendar for you, we need to know what you want. So um, things again from skills type classes like contract writing. Um, outside our market center teachers, both uh, other KW people or things like CPAs. Um, we want to bring whatever you want um, for 2021 to, to give you the best year that we can. So I'll post that and then Drew, I'll kick it your way. Sure. Thank you, ma'am. So I'm going to come at it from a little bit of a different lens. Guys, we are looking for teachers. And more than that, I have a goal uh, being part of this committee I would love for everybody in the market center to teach at least one class. And that may sound a little bit crazy, like, oh, I'm, I'm too busy selling real estate or whatever. However, if you are truly learning based, and I believe if you're at this company, you come from a place of you want to learn, you learn the best by teaching. You only remember 10% of what you read. You remember 20% of what you hear, but you remember 70% of what you teach. So if you have a goal for this year, I would encourage you, whatever you're focusing on this year, what if you taught a class on it? What if you taught a class on, if you, if you wanted to increase your finances, what if you taught a class on net worth? If you wanted to really nail your listing presentation, what if you taught a class on listing presentations? So I would just encourage everybody out there, please reach out to Katie, myself, or Amy, if you are interested in teaching a class. And if you're like, oh, I'm too busy for that, just remember guys, you heard Alyssa at the beginning of the call say Jim and Linda McKissick who run our entire region are taking time out of their busy schedules to teach us. And if they're not above teaching, I would say nobody is. Gary Keller's taking time for family reunion to teach us and he doesn't have to do that. So you don't become the number one training company in the world without teachers. So I would just implore everybody on this call, please, please, please let us know what you would love teaching because we are absolutely excited and we have a goal for everybody to teach at least one class. And if there are those of you out there on the other end of the spectrum, oh, I'm too new, I can't teach a class, that is absolutely false as well. Everybody sees the world in a different way and everybody can bring value to any class they teach. So don't let that stop you. And if nothing else, just please do it because we need your help. <laughs> so 
Thank you guys so much. And we look forward to hopefully having everybody attend a class this year and teach one. And real quick, just to kind of plug some of the stuff on our upcoming training calendar, some of these outside teachers like the Huffakers um, and Jen Davis a little bit later this month. Um, if you've never heard Jen Davis speak, um, she's and uh, the Huffakers as well. They're family reunion mega camp panel quality people. These are these are high level skilled people that can bring a lot of knowledge to the table. Um, Jen Davis, I've, I've followed her for a little while. She is. Uh, she closes over 100 units as a buyer's agent. Um, she built her own team within her team to hire showing assistants and things like that. So she is definitely one to watch. Um, even if you aren't necessarily a quote unquote buyer's agent, you can learn a lot from her about leverage. And obviously the Huffers, um teaching us about database. There's nothing more important than staying in, co in contact with uh, the people that already know, like, and trust you and, and building a strong system around that. So I would encourage you anytime you see a name on our calendar that you don't recognize um, that's from another brokerage or uh, another KW office or something like that, make time on your calendar for those because these are people that are on stage at these big events and you can learn so much from them. Very well said. Thank you. Thank you both. And technology, Ms. Lindsay Vallandingham is leading us in the tech world. Hi, y'all. Um, <laughs> so I uh, am excited about the tech team because I am not a technologically savvy person. And I, I hope that there may be others out there um, like me who just don't feel all that comfortable with technology in general. Um, I married an IT person thinking I would never have to deal with that. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think we can take this on because I think like to Drew's point, you know, we're only gonna, we're gonna get stronger um, with technology in general, if we're willing to tackle this. Um, and then also like Katie and Drew were saying, I wanna make sure that, that we as a market center are offering all of the tools that you need to help you become the tech savvy agent that you probably need to be in 2021. Um, and so, you know, that's why I'm taking it on. I want to learn as much as possible, get as comfortable as possible so that we can, you know, go the next 20 years and be, be the sort of tech savvy agent that we think, you know, is probably headed in the, in this direction. So if you want to join me and help me learn, we'll meet once a month. Um, and, and our goal will be to help the market center have access to the tools that we need and also to have access to the education we need to utilize those tools that we are provided. So I'll put my info in the chat and I would love to hear from you. Oh, and Lisa Warfield, of course, the most tech savvy person in our market center has agreed to join me and help me. So you get me, but you also get the tech guru genius. So um, I think that's a huge Stop benefit. It. <laughs> And I think we can all learn a little something from her. So um, yeah, so you get you get the two of us. And uh, yeah, so that's what I've got. And I'll put my stuff in the chat. Awesome. Thank you, Lindsay. Embracing technology is necessary. If we don't embrace it, the industry will take off without us. And we love you too much for that to happen. So thank you, Lindsay. All right. And Melanie Jones is leading the finance team this year. She was on. Oh, you're muted, Melanie. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I know. Well, you missed it. It was really good what I said. <laughs> anyway, good. So finance is not boring based on that little emoji there. And for the same reasons that Lindsay said, I was on the finance committee. I volunteered because I really didn't know how this company ran and I wanted to learn. So you have the opportunity along with Lisa Miller who guides and directs us once a month to come together and really you're not digging in you are really overseeing trying to help the market center to be the most profitable so that we can put more profit share back in our pockets and uh, it's any contribution is always um 
good because there's little things that we might see that the company doesn't see day in and day out. So it's just an extra set of eyes and um, it's just a good place to be. So if you're interested and you want to learn more, just I've already put my name and number in there and uh, Lindsay Vlandingham and I have sat on this together. Uh, so hopefully she'll stick with us and um, I look forward to working with some of you. So please feel free to volunteer. All input is acceptable. That's it. I think it's important to know too that when you understand the finances of a business, it helps add value and understanding to how the business works and how it provides value to you as an agent. So if that's ever something that's kind of made you scratch your head a little bit, I encourage you to sit in on those meetings and, and participate and help as you're able. That's good. All right. And last but not at all least is our luxury team. The, this is our maiden voyage for luxury. And it is, this is a really exciting space that um, we're leaning into and learning more about and truly developing here at the Market Center. And I saw all, Laura and Ala are both on the call today. Let's make sure you're not okay. yeah. Who would like to speak between the two of you all? Ala, were you gonna speak? Yeah, I can just start real quick and then of course I'll let Laura take it away. Um, am I unmuted? You yes, are. Okay. <laughs> just wanna make sure. So um, I cannot see myself, but maybe that's what is supposed to happen. Um, I wanted to say guys to all of you, first of all, uh, kind of a, to maybe reiterate, uh, even though it's a new committee and Laura will talk more about it, but just know we're here, know it's achievable. It is absolutely doable for all of us. doesn't matter what price ranges we are all working. But I also wanted to say that for years and years since we moved to this new building on 1911 Shelbyville Road, which is our proud in our signature lines and email and our business cards, that's address. You know, it became our work home. For me, for sure it did. And with 2020 being so different, let's keep it going virtually. You know, it's still our work home. It just, we don't see each other in person. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping sure it, soon it will change, but um, it's still this energy that we all need. And, uh, Mo Anderson on the call that we got to listen a month ago or so, I loved her words, let's all love each other and let's just have all each other backs. I believe it's very, very important. Um, to kind of a flash forward, to qualify probably, to, to uh, have an access to KW Luxury International resources, which are incredible. Uh, the standard that they, um, I, we with Laura were on this two hours, almost two hour calls from, uh, from, I believe it was from Austin, from Texas, that we have to be able to sell for, for the 24 months. And by the way, again, it's doable. And the excellence, the standard, it has to, the price point, it has to start from 700,000, uh, but 24, for 24 months, four transactions. Now, if there is an agent, and please, please talk to me and Laura, we're gonna put our info in a chat in a second. If there is an agent, for example, who didn't have that, who didn't maybe sell four of that criteria for 24 months, for properties for 24 months, please, please, uh, reach out to me and Laura because we also learned, which is a wonderful thing. Even if it's even if you're representing the seller or a buyer in this price point right now, without meeting that previous criteria, you absolutely can have access to those resources and KW luxury uh, marketing. I know we're going to be brief today, and so I'm going to just tell you know take Laura have Laura take it. Hi, everybody. I'm excited to talk to you all today about luxury. Um, it's not really something new to us, which is fascinating. This is uh, something that's been around at Keller Williams. We just haven't been telling the story. So uh, when I came on board last year, that was a big discussion between myself 
and Linda and Kim Alexander that it's time for us to tell the luxury story, the Keller Williams luxury story in Louisville. Um, I think we would all agree right now, there's two big players in our current market that we each think of when we think of luxury in Louisville. And so we wanna kind of come in and take the spot of that third player. What's fascinating is that as a firm, it would blow your mind to know that in 2019, and I quote 19 because our 20 numbers aren't in yet, $31 billion of real estate, luxury real estate was sold by Keller Williams agents internationally. That is more than any of our competitors. One of the other things that's fascinating, because I coming over didn't even know there was a luxury division to Keller Williams, um, is that really what sold me on switching to Keller Williams was what we offer our clients is so much better than the two competitors we have in our market here. So we just need to get out and start telling our story. And, and that means telling our story to you all even. So there's going to be two ways now. It's no longer a pay to play model, which is different and very exciting to me. So there are gonna be two things. There's gonna be luxury listings, and then there will be earn in luxury agents which is what all was talking about. And that just means you have to have sold four properties over 700 in the last two years to qualify as an earn in listing agent. And, and, and we with Alyssa will be uh, identifying kind of who may qualify as an earn in, in our office. We'll be doing that over the next couple of weeks. So we, you may be getting a call from us there. More importantly though, we would like to become an agent destination for luxury because y'all of all the firms in the city that should have a luxury like hold it's us because of our profit share opportunity. This is an astonishingly quick way for each of us to earn more money, whether you're selling luxury real estate or not. If we can get luxury agents to our firm, then we're all making way more profit share. So that's our goal. Our goal is to increase our presence in the market and become that kind of third destination for a luxury uh, clients. And in that light, we're going to meet on Tuesday, January 19th, that's two weeks from today, right after the team meeting from 12 to one, we'll probably do it virtually. Um, Ala and I will put our information on the sideline. If you are an agent that's dabbled in luxury and would really like to increase your particular um, sales average price, then come on, let's do it. Awesome, thank you guys so much. And then we've got Leadership Academy, uh, with Jessica Yu and Beth Siri. Jessica, I know you're on the call. Hello, everybody. Hello. So we are the, Beth and I are part of the Leadership Academy. So we are basically the, um, the rats who do all the work that <laughs> the ALC needs us to do. So we do all the grunt work that they tell us to. So we're just happy to help and serve. And one of the projects that we are spearheading is the um, showing assistant program. So please be on the lookout for a survey. Amy should be sending that out probably this afternoon. And we just want your feedback on um, if you would benefit from a showing assistant, what your thoughts are, um, any comments, what your needs are, how often you would need one. And so we're really trying to um, fill in a need in the market center. And I know a lot of um, solo agents like myself have had to scramble to find people to help us with showing. So that's one of the first projects that we're working on. Um, I don't know if we're able to have any committees, but we're always welcome to your suggestions and your comments and concerns. So um, if you ever see me and Beth around, we're, our offices are right next to each other by Michelle Duncan. Come by and say hi and look out for that survey. Yes. And you can absolutely, I would encourage you all to also build a bench as well. And, and we appreciate you taking on 
you know, a project that's going to benefit the market center. When we talk about a showing assistant, we're referring to a showing assistant that's accessible to all the agents, not necessarily teaching you how to hire a showing assistant. Right, right. Thanks mm -hmm. for clarifying, Alyssa. So this would be a program where if you're a newer agent or you're someone who has extra time and you want to help um, agents with showings, walkthroughs, um, things like that, please reach out to us or fill it out on the survey. And if you're somebody who would just like some help with showings every now and then, this would be the perfect um, program, I think, for you. Awesome. Beth and Jess, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you to everybody. Y'all, our, our ALC and Leadership Academy are some of those fantastic, loving, smart individuals you will meet. We're blessed to have them as leading our office and to be there as a resource for you. So all we need for you guys to do is jump in, lean in, choose a team to be on, um, and it will just uh, pr propel us in ways that, that we don't even realize right now. So thank you everybody for your time. Thank you being, for being open to meeting on Tuesdays at 11 moving forward. It's 12.07. I'm gonna let you get at the rest of your day. Take care. <laughs>